I'm here this morning talking about a lovely teddy bear called Candy Bear and it's by Susan Hickson and it is all, let me show you what the pattern looks like here and it's this little beauty cute little teddy bear so I'm here in Boise Idaho my daughter, um, her baby was actually due the beginning of May, but she ended up having it early because she had a little bit of high blood pressure. Um, so they decided to go ahead and deliver her. And she had a beautiful baby girl, Claire, and she's super healthy and everything's great, but I am not at home right now. I'm gonna stay here for a little bit and make sure that her baby is sleeping pretty well through the night and that she is, ha Lauren has everything that she needs before I go back home. So I'm still here helping her. So, but I did get not as much knitting as I normally do, of course, because I was holding that cute little baby. <laughs> but it's all good because I started the teddy bear and I did learn a few things. And this, if you look at the pattern, this pattern can be found on Ravelry. And like I said, it's called Candy Bear. And it is knit in all different kinds of pieces. So, and then you do a lot of seaming together. And she does have some patterns that are um, not done in, that are done in the round, so you don't have to seam them all. But I particularly like this teddy bear. And so I thought I would make it, just because I like the look of it, I love the outfit, I thought it was darling. And for me, it's worth it. I like messing around and trying to turn something knit in the round all in one piece using the magic loop method and then um, making it my own. I have no problem with that. So if you have a pattern out there, don't be afraid to, and it's knit in pieces, don't be afraid to go ahead and knit those in the round using the magic loop method. And you can just use our stitch counts, which is kind of cool, which is what I do. And it turns out pretty good. So today we are gonna be talking about a couple tricks that you can use to make your projects easier, less seeming, right? So this little pattern you can see my little legs and my teddy bear right so i did this knitting them two at a time in the round using the magic loop method isn't that cool so that's how i'm knitting them and i i cut this off because i'm going to be um starting the body with this strand of yarn so i only have one of the strands still attached but if you notice at the bottom of the feet it's all in one piece. I had no seaming at the bottom and the pattern. So what I did is I used uh, Judy's Magic Cast On and then I flipped it inside out. I'll show you what I mean by that. It's a pretty cool little trick and I've used this all different kinds of times. So let me see if I can find the end of a strand of yarn here so I can show it this cute this awesome little method that I've used well I have some uh, finish free baby booties and it's a free pattern on our website um, and I use this method do you want me to go around you yeah can you side? come over here Jim yeah. that'd be great that would be totally awesome so to use Judy's magic cast on I'm just gonna cast on 10 stitches right so I have my working yarn and I have my two needles on the circular needle or pointing to the left so the points are pointing toward the left and the working yarn goes up over that back needle with the tail going toward my tummy right then I give it a twist now my top index finger is going to load the bottom needle and my thumb is going to load the top needle so I'll do it really slow two two three three Four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, ten. Now I have the correct number of stitches, and all you have to do is flip it over this way, and I just grabbed the two strands and brought them through the center. Now always check your stitch count to make sure you have the correct number of stitches. So I have 10 stitches on each needle. So if I was doing that, that baby booty, now I could begin knitting and it will be in the round. Of course, when you're knitting in the round, you'll have to change your purl rows to plain knit rows and you'll have to, to maintain garter 
quarter stitches, knit one row, purl one row. So on this one, we have the purl row in the center, so you would begin by knitting. But that's how you can make the bottom of these booties seamless and look beautiful without having to seam it. Isn't that cool? Yeah, so it's you, a great technique. Basically, you're, you were saying is that you can get... Like, you can do this bare with about half the seaming, right? Yes, at least half the seam, seaming, if not more. So that is a great way to start at the bottom of your booty. And then you can just follow the pattern. But you have that pearl in the center here, and there's it's not open. You're not knitting flat. So if I look at the bottom of the foot, and I'm going to... Let's take a look here? at this little... Nope, stay right here, Jim. That's great. So you guys will have to bear with us because we're not at home in our normal setting. So it's a little different, but it's all good. Um, I'm looking for my little foot pattern. We're just in a park near our daughter's house. Mm-hmm. Okay, where is the bottom? How to make the legs, body, head, baby ears. Oh, gosh. All right, so somewhere here. I don't know why I can't see it. It's the bottom of the feet. Oh, oh, oh. That's the legs. But I don't know where the little, the bottom of the feet are. Looks like you changed your pattern a little bit. <laughs> I, I did something. Yes, I flipped it over. I cast on 44 stitches using Judy's Magic Cast On. And then I flipped it over. Were you going to show so that the purling, too? I just showed you just oh. now. that, And then I followed it. So wherever it says purl row, we make it a knit row. And then the next row after that will be a purl row. So that is how I did that. Yeah, so it, it shows it starts at the bottom of the foot. Anyway, it's a really nice pattern. Easy to follow, but it has a lot of seam. Jim, you might want to stay here because I'm going to be looking oh, okay. at the ears. Oh, okay. So now, right. if you look at these little ears, I used Judy's Magic Cast On, and you see how it has a perfectly round shape here? You know how when we make our socks and we have to do a increase for um, socks, the ears are the same way. So let, now let's see if I can have better luck doing my ears. Socks, candy stripe. We're here. Body. Oh, oh, there it goes. <laughs> okay. Ah, here's my ears. That once um, the yellow thing just went flying, Jim. Um, so for the baby's ear, the baby teddy bear ears, it tells me to cast on ten stitches and then begin with our increases. And it has you make four. Make four. But what I did is I used Judy's Magic Cast On and I cast on four stitches. So it made it a little more pointed at the top, like teddy bear ears. Do you see how that's a little more pointed? So I cast on four stitches and I increased every round until I had 12 stitches on, um, yes, 12 stitches on each needle because I cast on for two at a time. So using Judy's Magic Cast On, Let's see if I can show you. Oh, dear. <laughs> That's going to be a mess. Let's see here. Can I find a strand of yarn that's not all Well, you're doing that. I'm going to go get your paper. Okay, you do that. It's a little windy here today. So, anyways, okay, so I'm using Judy's Magic Cast On, and again, I have my tail going up over the top and toward my tummy, even though it has flown back toward the bathrooms. So, so we start have, over again, because I wasn't saying. Okay, so I have my tail. It needs to go. Jim, don't, don't, uh. <laughs> okay, so we have one on each needle, and then two, two, three, three. Four, four. And this is how you do it so that you don't have to make four ears. Isn't that awesome? So I'm going to increase every round until I have 12 stitches on each side. So uh, in the pattern, it tells you to. One second. I was trying. Idea. It causes problems. So when I make my increases in the pattern, it says make one. But what I like to do is when I'm on the right-hand side of my work, I would make a make one right. 
Okay, and you want to grab the strand that is the strand that's coming off this stitch. Don't grab your tail strand. You want to grab that one, and you want to make one right. And right, you know it's a make one right because there's a V in the front. If it was a make one left, it would be like that. So it's like a loop over the top, but no V here. So that's a make one left. So let's fix it back and make it make one right. And what I like to do is take my thumb and hold that. I loosened it up. Did you see how I loosened that up so that I can make one right easily? And then I wait until I knit all the way to the last stitch. I'm trying to hold down my paper so it doesn't go flying like the other one. Then I'm going to make one left. One second here. It's kind of hard to knit when I'm trying to hang on to that. Let's see if I can put something on that. So I did that and now I'm going to be increasing every time until I have 12 stitches on my needles and each side will be increasing too. So I have six here and then four here and then I'll make sure I have my working yarn again and then I'm going to go ahead and knit one stitch and then which, which kind of increase do we normally use? On the right hand edge we do a make one right just like you would do when you make your socks. If you do a make one left it doesn't have the um, beautiful flowing edge that you would want. It doesn't look as good. And then I'm going to make one left and then I just increase every single time until I have 12 stitches. So that's six. So I would go increase again which would give me eight and increase again which would give me ten and then so on and so forth and then once we get up to 12 stitches then you just simply follow the pattern the only thing that I would do differently is because I'm working in the round I will change those purl one row to knit one row because I'm not flipping my work back and forth, you know, when you're knitting flat, I'm knitting in the round. I don't need to purl a row. I can knit every row, which makes it even a little faster. I can do both ears. I did both ears in less than an hour. Why don't and you then, show them that again? They said they liked it. Too. Yeah, Some and it's really, it. really easy. Simple See, ears. it wants to fold in all on its own so that I will be able to seam it. And you see, it's going to be look as, just as pretty on the back. And by doing the make one rights and the make one left, like I showed you, you get a very smooth edge that is very cute. Don't you think it's cute? cute little and it, it actually, um, it, it dips in on its own. So it's going to be a really cute little bear ear. Mind you, when I did her cast on of 10 stitches, it was about maybe about that wide at top. And it didn't look like a bear ear. I don't, I, I think maybe my gauge was a little bit loose. Here's the problem. You're always fighting one thing or another. But on this particular pattern and this yarn, you want your yarn to be soft and squishy when you knit it. And if you knit it too tightly, you're going to turn it into a rock. So for this project, for the um, Appalachian Organic Baby Cotton that I'm testing out, which is this pink yarn here, I used a number four needle, and that gave me a really squishy fabric. Now on the Rios, this is the color Sandbank, and it gave me, it was too tight on a number four needle. I had to go up to a number six to get a fabric that wasn't um, ungodly stiff. So, and we don't want stiff fabric. Now you'll notice here that I have these safety pin markers. And the reason why I wanted to show these to you is when it says to, for instance, knit 34 rows, what I do is every 10 rows, I would put a stitch marker around that exact stitch to mark the 10th row. And then I would count again till I got 10 more and then 10 more. This is an easy way for you to be able to mark your rows and not have to count over and over from the beginning. So I see a lot of people, they spend most of their time counting. They're going one, two, three, all the way up. <laughs> it takes a while, it takes a while, especially half the people will begin counting and then they lose count. They, they forgot where they were, what number they were on <laughs> or what stitch was actually number, so they had to start over. So if you use these little locking stitch markers, and you can find these on Alpaca Direct. It's Alpaca Direct brand, right? Yep. 
and they're fantastic little stitch markers they stay locked and they're big and sturdy enough that um, they work really well for this project another thing that I wanted to show you on this ear when I was doing the ear I didn't want to use the beginning of the round marker because it's one more thing to slip so what I did is I took this locking stitch marker and every time I got to this beginning of the round I would see the green marker again so sometimes when you're doing increases every round you will forget where the beginning of the round was for instance and maybe you'll only do two increases on one side and forget that the two increases on the back so your stitch count will be off so if you use a locking stitch marker for a little project like this it's real quick you can be sure that you will keep your stitch count accurate and therefore have that lovely little round ear that um, just folds in perfectly for a little teddy bear ear with no seaming and you see how nice the edge looks with that make one right on the right side and make one left on the left side um, so for those right and left leaning increases now here I've started the back and I, I'm kind of trying to decide you see it's a little tiny bit loose here do you see how it's a little bit loose there I used um, Judy's magic cast on to cast on for the back of the head um, I was trying to make it totally seamless but I may have to go back and tighten up a few of these stitches using this little tiny tail and I have a, well I left it long enough so that if I had any seaming I could easily seam now it would be easier for me to seam this than it would be for me to seam a whole flat piece see a lot of the time that's taken in when you do these beautiful little projects is the finishing and people leave it for like a year and they haven't finished their beautiful little teddy bear because guess what they don't have enough time on this earth to finish all the seaming so what I was trying to do is take some of the work out of it so you can actually do it fairly quickly now I haven't been able to work on it as much as I'd like to just because of little Claire bear but I, um, I am really enjoying spending time with um, Claire so you're it's gonna totally have to make worth two it. of those you know because Evie's gonna want one too. yes Evie will want one too yep and these are the little bows and I I'm for sure gonna stick them on her feet and I like I said my colors are a little different I can't do you see how the little bows will go on the feet <laughs> isn't that cute it's so cute anyways um yeah and I did my little um, bows in the round so I didn't have to seam them together after I was done and then I just put the part that is this cotton is a little less forgiving than wool you can't make the stitches exactly behave but don't worry because that back edge which was the beginning of my round the join in the round is going to be on the back so it'll be really easy to take care of and leaving a little bit longer tails on these projects is also really great idea <laughs> it, it's a totally great idea anything else so um anyways one second jim let me look at my list so we have our judy's magic cast on which is what i've shown you and it's great very very handy for the project and then um working in the round working in the round instead of knitting flat and changing those pearl rows to actual knit rows make sure see this one they would even have you seam the leg <laughs> and it's like uh i don't think i want to seam the leg so i just joined it in the round and just work all you have to remember is when you take this little guy and i get ready to put it on the body I have to orient the foot the proper direction I don't want my doll with its legs leaning sideways like that <laughs> so I'll have to reorient the stitches so that the half the stitches from each side now um, switch directions go on different needles so that we can have it um, so the feet are facing outward but it's gonna be a really cute little teddy bear now, I told you about the make one rights for the right side and make one left for the left side. So for those of you who knit socks, it's the same exact technique. Isn't that cool? So you learn these little techniques and it's you can use it for everything. You can make 
toys with it, you can make hats with it, you can make anything with it. So whenever you need to do it, um, an increase, you can use that method and you'll get the wonderful, beautiful oriented increases and very smooth increases by on the right side you make it run right, on the left you make left. And so it's totally cool. And let me see, I wanted to show you one more thing here that was kind of cool that I'm actually looking for. So if you look here on this picture, here's the body. That is the feet and this is the body. And she joins them together by seaming right here. But I'm thinking that, let's see if we can go, I'm gonna work on the head right now. I'll either go top down or bottom up. If I do end up doing these guys, leaving them here and having doing the whole top all the way down, then I'll do a Kitchener and Kitchener to it. It'll be totally cool. I can do that. Um, either that. Um, but I want to look here on. Oh, and also for these arms. If you look, uh, let's see if I can find a picture of the arms. Okay, so here's little teddy bear's arm seamed again. So the head is seamed to the trunk, the arms are seamed, the legs are seamed to the trunk. So my goal is, I'm thinking, I'm working on the head right now, I am may possibly do a raglan and check what the uh, stitch count is here and just increase up to that stitch count. So on a raglan sweater, you would actually have, I don't, you would have a slant uh, right here. It would slant across your work. And that would be, I would connect the arms using that method. <laughs> and so I'll show you this next week. What I'm going to do is next week, I'm going, I'm going to actually finish this baby. And then I'm going to show you how I did the rest of it. <laughs> but I'm thinking that's what I'm going to do because... I don't know. I think it seems like an easy way to do it and then I don't have to seam the arms on. Also, you might want to think about another thing. This was another thought that I had in my mind. If you make your teddy 15 inches, guess what else is 15 inches? Do you know what it is, Jim? American Doll Girls. Yes! Ameri and I didn't even tell him that. He knew that on his own. That's because we bought a ton of them. He's getting pretty smart in his age. He's going to be a knitter before you know it. I'm going to convert him into knitting. But here's the thing. On Ravelry, if you look American Girl Doll Clothing, there are many, many patterns, right, Jim? Mm -hmm. Like 20 to 1 American Girl Dolls. So if you make your little teddy so that it matches the dimensions of the American Girl doll, well, you have an infinite amount of clothes that you can make for your teddy bear. So I want you to all keep that in mind when you're making your candy bear by Susan Hicks. Also, I am, as I've been going along, I've probably told you this before, I've been testing this Appalachian Baby U.S. Organic Cotton Yarn. Now this yarn's a little bit more expensive, um, but it's super soft and I really really like it and of course this yarn here is Rios in the Sandbank colorway and I thought it was a perfect Malabrigo, color. Malabrigo, right? Yes, Malabrigo and um, what Rios is is a superwash yarn that is made from Merino and what superwash means means that you can wash it in the wash machine. Now I would probably wash it in the wash machine on cold and then take it out and let it dry on top of the dryer. But you can wash it in the wash machine. I just don't care. When I spend so many hours making my projects, I do not want to throw them in a hot dryer and shorten their lifespan. <laughs> so I don't do that, right, Jim? Mm -hmm. <laughs> also, I wanted to tell you about this polyfiber that is inside of your little teddy bear. When you're doing polyfiber, if you just pick little bits, right? little bits when you're feeling filling it inside of your projects here little bits at a time you won't have any lumpy teddy bears that's what helps you prevent the lumps so when you're using the poly fiber fill make sure to get just little tiny pieces that you're filling your project with and also keep in mind when you're filling your project who is the project for is it for a baby that wants something soft and squishy 
or is it for an adult that's going to be sitting up on the shelf and it's going to it uh, having it stiff is not going to be a problem you want to use it as a um, an actual ornament kind of for a shelf ornament right Jim mm -hmm. or for an adult's bedroom um, and so always keeping that in mind when you're filling it is important now this last week for our prize every week we have a prize right you guys you guys remember that so last week it was for some chow goo needles and this is just to show you what the chow goo needles look like I do not have the needles with me but they are at the shop and this was for well, that's one of them it's just stay out of the box right the it's, I mean I don't have the un, unused ones right. I don't have the ones in the package because these are my personal needles and what I love about chow goo needles number one these are called red lace chow goo red lace needles and if you look at the top they have a beautiful top don't they it's so nice and pointed for doing these projects you cannot beat this lace tip and I love using metal needles for those of you out there that want to knit just a little bit faster <laughs> the metal needles are your answer to your problem you can go a little bit faster with the metal needles now so this was the prize for last week so for this week we thought maybe we would offer either chow goo red lace needles as a prize or we would write offer knitter's pride dreams and these are wooden needles that are they're wonderful aren't they jim mm -hmm. and they are by knitter's pride like i said and they are nice too the cord has a little bit more memory on them but it's still completely usable. It's not all curled up and funky looking, I don't think. So you guys need to help me. You vote, you tell me which ones you like the best. Do you like the Knitter's Pride Dreams? Dreams or what else? Or Chow Goo Red Lace. So Dreams or Red Lace. Yes, there and we will send that out for next week's prize. And let's take a look and see who the winner was for this week. <laughs> we gotta see. You got some chow goo needles. That's wonderful. Oh, Katie Cummings, congratulations. You won. You got some needles. And we will be sending out, do you think number eight 32 inch might work for you guys? I don't know, but 32 inch have been flying off the shelf. Um, so I think we will send those 32 inch number eights out in the mail. Well, be careful because we always are out of stock. Every time well, we get them in, they're gone. Okay, <laughs> if not, if we can't send 32 inch number eights, then maybe we can do, do you want to do try 16 if the 32 inch is not in stock? Something. Because 16 is a perfect um, width for doing a hat. So if you wanted to do a worsted way hat for next winter, that would be your ticket. So either one. We will send that out. So congratulations, Katie Cummings. You won the Chow Goo Needles. And all you have to do is get in contact with customer service at Alpaca Direct, and we will get those needles out in the mail to you. <laughs> and tell them how they so, can enter so they remember. Yep, and all of you guys, don't forget, you guys remember how to enter, right? You post comments in the comment section. You let us know what you're working on. Maybe you give us the name of the pattern. We always want to know the name of the pattern because it's so fantastic for us to get new ideas. And I get ideas all the time from our wonderful knitters. And we had, was it Suzanne Jennings that co commented on the Appalachian Baby um, cotton? I think so. She said she's used it a number of times and she really likes it. And so that is wonderful. That's the kind of news that I want to hear from you guys because I want you to help me pick up the best products for all of you so that you have things that you can enjoy when you get products from Alpaca Direct. You know they're tried and true and that we have tested them for you and they are good quality. So that's what we're always looking for. Good quality product that is not super expensive but that you will enjoy working with. So those are the products that we bring into Alpaca Direct. So I hope that you guys have a great week. I will be finishing up this wonderful teddy bear and then maybe I'll have learned something new by that time. I don't know. I'm thinking that my teddy bear needs to have a backside. And so I am probably going to use short rows, like a short row heel on the back of my teddy bear's backside so that my teddy bear can sit or stand.
<laughs> so I will be back with you next week and we can take a look and see how I've done. You guys have a great week and I will see you next Tuesday.